Hey guys, welcome back. We're gonna continue here. Uh, last time was a fun one. Yeah, we had plenty of fun with the Griffin, with a Leshen, and with various other things. Mainly with that Leshen. I don't know what that was. I, I think I edited out enough of that fight for it to not be like super frustrating to viewers because I may have died, I don't know, three, four times on screen, but off screen, uh, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to like even say a number. It's gonna scare you guys. So, anyways, <laughs> uh, we're gonna move on here and do another episode of just random exploration. I need to get back into the groove of the game. So, um, I mean, uh, questing doesn't actually prevent me from doing that. But the thing is, with questing, I don't always get to experience combat. So with like exploration and going through these uh, places of interest, and there are a lot of places of interest in this game, uh, I can actually just get the feel of the game again and um, just try to get used to uh, combat after not playing for three weeks. So um, one thing that I changed up about my setup is that I am no longer wearing headphones actually, so I'm going to have my speakers uh, playing the sound directly. Uh, which means that you might hear a little bit of maybe feedback, a little bit of uh, it's it's a possibility. I'm not saying that it's guaranteed um, or it, uh, that it's going to happen even, but um, if there's any problems with it after this recording, I will go back to wearing headphones. But if not, like this is a bit more comfortable for me. Like I don't have to uh, worry about another set of um, cords and stuff just getting in my way. So I already have like the, uh, the plug for my controller, the one for my uh, microphone, and the one for my mouse and keyboard on my desk. It's like getting pretty messy. I don't need another one just getting in my way. Uh, so we're gonna move on to this next place of interest here. This is, this is like the great thing about The Witcher 3. Uh, there are always more places that you can explore and just more monsters to kill. So um, you run never really run out of content until you do, obviously. But you know that's uh, that's not coming for another I'd say hundred hours or so, at least. Okay, so we got a nice bandit camp here. Where are the actual bandits though? <laughs> what? I what? I'm not going crazy, right? That just said bandit camp. Uh, yeah, that's the bandit camp marker. <laughs> and there are no bandits, instead there are some like ghouls in the outskirts. Alright. That is fine. I'm gonna loot this animal fat crossbow and some bolts, okay. So, uh, I was going to say something. Oh, yes. Um, between last episode and this one, I actually patched the Witcher 3 Enhanced Edition with, like, the newest update. Uh, well, it's not the newest anymore. This was, I believe, the mod author uploaded the update on July the 1st. Uh, it's July the 4th today. Happy Independence Day, Americans. That's something we don't celebrate here in Canada. But um, I'm probably going to be uploading this video uh, towards late July, maybe even early August. We'll see uh, what happens, but... Uh, the patch is basically, it, I just went over it really briefly, I think I just, um, what did I see? Uh, it made the inner strength ability slightly stronger, I think. Um, inner strength being, I'm just going to show you guys real quick, whoops. Um, this one right here, if no vigor points are available, signs will be cast using stamina, but with 63% sign intensity re reduction. Honestly, I don't even know how it was buffed, <laughs> because I think that's exactly what it was before. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um... Let's see what else was patched. Oh yes, uh, the caretaker spade. So that big shovel that drains health. Uh, if you remember from a while ago, actually, when I was using it, um, it was not draining health from monster type enemies. So it was only draining from humans. And even then, like the health drain was kind of really insignificant. So what I did was actually I sold it to an NPC. I have no idea which one I sold it to, but if I can just like go back into one of my videos, um, I can find it and probably purchase it back if I really wanted to. But the thing is, um, we're using the Iris, which is a fantastic steel weapon. I don't think 10% life drain is actually worth sacrificing all this attack power from the Iris. So um, there is a pretty good chance that I just won't even go back to it. So I don't know if I mentioned but, like this whole time, but uh, the patch was basically, it made it so that uh, it also life drains from monsters. Yeah, I, I believe... Um, that life drain issue with monsters was not a bug from the mod itself, but actually a bug from Vanilla Witcher 3. Um, which is interesting because uh, I don't think CDPR actually ever fixed that. Yeah. And there were just several other just minor equipment and weapon buffs uh, that I won't go over. But um, yeah, that's basically it. We got some drowners on this abandoned site it looks like. Let's fight us some drowners. 
actually feels really strange for me not having headphones because <laughs> it just seems like everything I do is a lot louder. Like uh, <laughs> my button presses on my controller, for example. I know, I know when I press them really fast, uh, you guys can actually hear it on the other side. Um, I like that silver through the recording, but I don't think it's a big deal. I really should get one of those noise reduction things for my um, for my microphone. It'll just make the audio quality a lot better. But unfortunately, I am poor. And I am lazy. <laughs> I don't really just like want to replace this microphone. Okay, so there were only three drowners on that abandoned camp. Easy peasy. And we got this settlement returning. Oh, we got uh, oxen for it there in the distance. Very cool. Area liberated. Oh, got ten crowns. <laughs> I feel like. Throw back under your rock. <laughs> I feel like, Garrett, um, thanks for everything. there you go, so, okay, I was gonna say, I feel like clearing out an entire ban uh, abandoned site of drowners is worth more than just 10 crowns and someone saying crawl back under your rock. Uh, that one dude that says, like, I'm gonna name my son Geralt, that is the kind of respect that you want, right? But obviously that's a bit too much, I don't need a child named after Geralt, you know? I but as long as they show a little bit of appreciation and not just like hey, well, you freaking mutants uh, or whatever. <laughs> That's all I'm asking for here, man. Okay, so is there a merchant here? <laughs> yep, I see one on the map there actually. I just want to briefly take a look. Greetings. It's not gonna be anything Wouldn't mind a look at your stuff. Too significant. I need to manage my inventory, obviously, eventually. But uh, I will do that off screen, so you guys don't have to worry about that. But for now, I do have some stuff I want to sell to him. I don't care if I can get a better deal from somewhere else. It's just uh, the difference is probably not even that significant. Out of my sight. Okay. Yeah, Redanians really don't like the Witchers. Well, let's move on here. There's two more places of interest I can visit. Quickly save my game. I've gotten really just um, accustomed to saving my game very frequently because it is a very good practice for anyone playing this game. Playing this mod, really. Okay, we got a ghoul monster nest, nest here. I'll just destroy it. And I don't think the ghouls will mind if I just pop their nest while they're still just crawling about. <laughs> yeah. Alright, and now I will go kill them. Hi there. Bastard. Oh my god. Yeah, this uh, camera angle is not the best. Okay, die, maybe? <laughs> maybe I can... Oh, that's not the right one. There we go. That one is dead. Man, I can't believe my axe is still failing. I thought I... Uh, maybe I didn't. Yeah. What did I put my axe points into? Like, puppet and... Uh, oh, the dialogue option one. The one where... Um, like they don't move. Uh, well, I'm, yeah, it's okay. There we go, and we got an igni still skill point. I think eventually I'm gonna have to actually spend some of these skill points. I know I have quite a couple of them ready to be spent, uh, but I will do that a little bit later, probably. Okay. And there are some, oh, there's some more ghouls back there. All right, I gotta save because health is kind of low. You never know what could happen. Ah, nice. That was the, uh, the rune in my sword kicking in there, giving it that burning. Burning is a very good status effect to inflict. Not only does it do damage over time, it also kind of staggers them a little bit until they're hit of course okay we've got a lot of materials here and I think I can loot this nest as well or have I already done that uh, I think I already did that yeah oh yeah part of the part of the patch for the mod is also that uh, ugly bastard Geralt's vertical looting uh, distance has been increased I don't know how significant that is kind of like you can you can loot an item up a hill if you were just slightly downhill. <laughs> Something like that, probably. Ghoul nest. Ought to just destroy it. Okay. Oh, and one thing I noticed from this um, this update here, um, 
correct me if I'm wrong, but these sword, um, what's it called? These sword pictures here, avatars, or what do you call those? Icons? <laughs> the, 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 the sword picture thing up there, I think they were made to be a bit more uh, HD. Am I, am I just going crazy? It feels like they look better to me. Or maybe I'm just sitting closer to my monitor than I was ever before, but... I don't know. It's it's like really insignificant, but... Something I noticed while off-screen. Okay, so there's another ghoul over there. Definitely no shortage of ghouls around here. And we got a whole bunch of stuff, and this ghoul is not le gonna let me loot it. Okay. Yeah, I just die. I'm not gonna even, not even gonna care about defense. Okay. Yeah, got some other stuff, and uh, that should be it for this place here. Yeah. So, um, actually, that's most of the that's most of the places of interest cleared just around the Oxenford area. Because we also read the notice board now, there's uh, there's Onus back here, there's, uh, there's a place around Novograd. But for the most part, the um, places of interest around Oxenford has been cleared, so that's kind of cool. Now, uh, the next closest area I have is actually this cat school diagram. So I'm just going to go ahead and track it, even though I probably won't be crafting the cat school gear for, if at all, then, uh, if not at all, then definitely for a very, very long time because uh, I think I mentioned before that uh, uh, Geralt's carry, carry weight is just not going to support having two full sets of armor. You know, even though cat gear is light armor, it's going to weigh, I'm assuming, less than the griffin armor because griffin armor is medium gear, a uh, medium armor. Uh, I would still wager that the cat set weighs quite a bit and... Uh, we already know what it does. It's kind of like if you alternate strong and weak attacks, you'll do increased damage, something like that. So, um, uh, and I prefer the Griffin one anyway. Yeah, although I gotta admit that uh, Yurden has been kind of nerfed um, since, you know, the last time I played a couple of months ago. Do I need to eat or drink? I don't even know what the icon is. <laughs> okay, so that is... Uh, that is eat, and the other one is drink. Now, of course, the other one has a potion bottle on it. Duh. Okay. So, yeah, what Yurden did back, like, in the earlier versions of this mod, so, like, version 3 point something, we're playing on 4 point something right now, 4.5, I think, 4.52. Uh, but in version 3 point something, Yurden, like, it kind of slowed them down really significantly, and it does a ton of damage. Now, it doesn't really slow them down that much anymore. Instead, it does damage in intervals and it staggers them. So, um, let me just take a look. Whoops, no, that's not what I want to do. Just want to take a look at uh, Yurden here. Five percent Yurden takes me 127 shock damage and 31.8 seconds duration. So, I'm not even sure if Yurden even slows them anymore at all. So, um, that's definitely a big nerf because what you could do with Yurden in a previous patch is you can lay two of them down because um, uh, one of the Yurden upgrade path allows you to put down two Yurden traps. And uh, if you say have 30 or 40% slowdown effect on each of them, they actually stack. And if you have 40%, then you'll get 80% speed reduction on enemies. And they're just basically moving us in slow motion at that point. And uh, it makes battles absolutely trivial. Which made Yurden just like really, really overpowered. And I, under I totally understand why it had to be nerfed. Um, before it was one of my favorite signs, now it's actually one of my least favorite signs uh, because of the nerf. Not to say that it's a bad sign, definitely not a bad sign because I chose to go with uh, the Griffin armor here, right, which uh, which enhances Yurden, so clearly I think, I still think highly of it. It's just, it's definitely nowhere near what it was before. Let's see what's going on Not here. another step, or there'll be one corpse more. Uh, no, I'm not going. What's going on here? Listen, I behind you if you think I'm gonna fall for it oh you fucker <laughs> arms, he's like arms, I'm not gonna fall for that and then he looks anyway <laughs> okay got some nice ghouls here oh owl ghouls oh okay not bad die yes that's one of them dead he's gonna use axie to get rid of those spikes 
think I mentioned that before. You can use Axis to get rid of the spikes. And, oh god, I was going to use the Iris strong attack, but I'm out of, out of stamina. Uh. Oh, man. There we go. Okay. Two more. Let's take care of this one first. Let's not hit the guy with the spikes. <laughs> what kind of bandits are you? Run for your lives. Come on, guys. It's just a couple of elbows. Come on. There we go. There's the stun. And I'm going to wait for my stamina, I mean my vigor, to regenerate a little bit so I can use the iris. What? Ah, the charge ran out. Yeah, this is a, this a very short lasting time for the iris charges. I think it's like 10 seconds or something like that. If you don't use it, then it goes away. But it's fine. Thank you. If not for you, that would have been the end of us. Sure as spring. Sure as spring. Isn't the, isn't the saying sure as rain? Sure as rain. Okay, got some blueberries. And it seems like that was the entire quest, which is <laughs> which is fine. You know, there there are there are short quests and there are long quests in this game. That that one definitely fell on the short side. Alright, uh, Al Cool Bone Marrow. Hmm. That sounds Decadent. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and just loot these things. And where are we? I actually have no idea where I am. Is this some kind of stone quarry or some kind of a uh, woodcutter's lodge of some sort? Mm, let's see. It's just a nothing. <laughs> Is there a fast travel point to here at least? Ah, oh, there it is. Codger's Query. Oh, I was right. It is a query. Okay. So my cat set gear is going to be in here. Might want to look around some. It's not the first part. It's the second part. But it doesn't matter if I'm not doing these in order. It's not like I'm going to be crafting it anytime soon. Okay. It's probably in this chest. There it is. Enhanced feline gauntlets. Okay. Still really keeping an eye on that Ori Halcom ore. Because I will need it to further upgrade my Griffin set. Uh, I'm not going to go out of my way to research on how to actually get it. But um, I will have to keep my eye, eye out on it. Because typically I don't loot iron ores. Or sting, uh, steel ores. Or any kind of heavy crafting materials, but uh, for Ori Halcom, I'm going to have to loot it. Okay. So yeah, I was, uh, I was saying in my last video, I've been playing a lot of Divinity Original two, uh, Sin 2, and I've also been playing a lot of Skyrim. <laughs> So, forgive me if I get, like, certain concepts or points from those two games confused with The Witcher 3. Because lore and um, setting-wise, they are very similar. Well, maybe not lore, but at least setting-wise, medieval fantasy. They are very similar. <laughs> so sometimes I might uh, say one thing over another. For example, I was watching one of my older episodes... And um, at the very last part of the mission, uh, uh, the last mission for the Hearts of Stone DLC, uh, it's called Whatsoever a Man Soweth, uh, you are supposed to meet Ogiert and uh, Gaunter at the Temple of Leovani. And then I called it Telvani because <laughs> it's just, you know, that's, a, that's an Elder Scrolls term. Just subconsciously, it just happens. Okay, so I know exactly where this place is actually. So uh, a while ago, we actually came around here. <laughs> the stuff that I didn't loot is still here actually. Uh, we came around here and we killed a bunch of harpies up there. We read some notes as well. But then I didn't have a bomb to destroy the harpy nest up here. So now I believe I do have a bomb and I can take care of it. I just hate leaving loose ends, you know. Harpies got their nest here. Yeah, so there you go. And what is this that I didn't loot last time? Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just random equipment that weighs too much. OK, 
Okay, harpy stuff. Diamond, harpy mutagen. Do we have one of those already? Huh, I can't be sure. Harpy mutagen, offensive stamina efficiency, 8%. Is that any good? Let's see, what, I, what do I have? Uh, defense 12%, stamina 1.9. It's actually not bad, right? It allows me to attack like 8% more often um, as far as like stamina usage goes. Hmm. Yeah, it's not bad. Might not be as good as anything else I have though. <laughs> My current mutagen setup is pretty solid. Vigor regen, uh, defense stamina. Although, yeah, it depends on what I'm fighting really. Against humans, Definitely defense stamina is slightly better, but against monsters, I think offense stamina is just ever so slightly better. For me and my playstyle, at least. Okay, so... Oh, cached shopkeeper. Um, I think what this is, is... Again, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, in Vanilla Witcher 3, how this would work is... Um, let's go ahead and do this contract with Lend Beast. Uh, how it will work is the game doesn't actually show all of the merchants on the map even after you've discovered them So for example after you unlocked a blacksmith uh, in a town in the one in Heatherton is a really good example uh, You unlock I think it's Heatherton you unlock the blacksmith and it's there while you're inside the town But as soon as you leave you go somewhere else the the icon the marker for the blacksmith Disappears from the world map and it becomes really difficult to find like a blacksmith at that point, right? Because you don't see any icons in the map. Um, and I think what that cached thing means on the on the uh, world map is just saying that there was once a merchant there. It may not be there anymore, but it was there. And Vanilla Witcher Three didn't include it, but the mod is going to include it. I think I have a feeling that's what that's for. Ruffians to a man. Okay, so there is going to be a dude offering a contract here for a woodland beast. Let's see what we're going to be dealing with here. Oh, by the way, these contract board notices I actually come back. <laughs> uh, a lot of them repeat, but some of them are unique to like just uh, visits to the notice board after your initial visit, which is quite interesting. I'm not going to read all of these, obviously, but um, oh, whoa, that... Uncovered more uh, places of interest. That's actually interesting. I could have sworn I've already read this one. Let me take a look. Hmm. Maybe I didn't. But anyway, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. So let's go ahead and talk to the captain here. Huh? What do you want? Hear about the notice? Got monster trouble? Trouble? <laughs> Good one. We're not having trouble. We're up shit fucking creek. <laughs> Some shaggy fuck knows what sitting in the woods attacking every plow and transport that dares take the high road. When they route to bolts, arrows, rations, all around, fucked. Sent a patrol out. Looks never came back. So the job's simple. Bring me the fucker's head and I'll give you gold. As much as the notice says, I'm not gonna haggle. Quartermaster won't budge. But I can throw in a pass that'll get you across the Pontar. So, deal? Sounds fair. See what I can do. I see. So we can't haggle with him, fine. Um, well, we already actually have a pass across the Pontar. It's a very illegitimate one, but it's a pass nonetheless. <laughs> it's okay. Whatever the contract says, I will take it. It's gonna be crowns either way. All right, Rochi girl, let's go. I have a feeling uh, Woodland Beast, what does it sound like? Hmm. I don't remember what it is, but if I were to guess, it's going to be either a uh, Leshen uh, or uh, some kind of uh, Basilisk or Draconid. Let's see if I'm right. So I'm putting my bets on um, let's see, relics, um, hybrids, and draconids. <laughs> Three different families of enemies. Let's see if I come close. Oh, oh hi, got some ghouls around here. Are those owl ghouls? 
Uh, Vezabir will be a shame. Those are Alguls. Geralt can't tell Ghoul from Alguul. And Siri can. <laughs> By markings, like the stripes from, like the what? Oh man, what did Siri say at the beginning? Um, like the stripes on the Pantera Tigris or something like that from Zeracania? Well, how long are you gonna make me wait? Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, single ghoul, they don't pose much trouble for me anymore. Especially when I'm at full health, when I'm just not, not even worrying about being hit. Like, it's, it's a funny thing, right? I think most people have this. Uh, it's like a tendency to be more worried and less confident the closer you are um, to dying in a video game. <laughs> it's just like, your skill level just drastically sinks. For, so like, when I'm fighting at full health, I, I just don't worry about anything. I'm super confident and I kill enemies. And more often than not, I'm just gonna like, not even take a hit on these ghouls or drowners. But if my health is really low and I'm one or two hits away from dying, I just mess up all over the place. I'm just terrible under pressure. Which is not a good thing to put on your resume, but <laughs> not everyone is truthful on their resumes. Footprints. A survivor? Either that or the monster's a humanoid. Okay. Claude and Nod. Necrophages fed here. But all the wounds they inflicted are post mortem. Yep. Looted bear. Either someone stole the cargo after the monster attack, or our monster collects military paraphernalia. Hmm. Somewhat of an intelligent one, huh? Look like claw marks. But here, an arrow. Shaft's broken off right at the skin. Something's fishy here. I should follow these tracks. You mean these ones? All right, let's see what we have. Oh, what does this say? This man has been sentenced to death by hanging for the crimes of theft, armed robbery, and uh, rape. May his rotting carcass serve as a warning to others who contemplate trespassing the Nilfgaardian Empire's laws. I think we read that one before. Mm -hmm. I want to look around some. That is a lot of drowners. Oh my god, six of them just standing in a row. Uh, okay. Yerdan, you're up. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay, okay. One of them just died to the Yerdan. Nice. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not even paying attention anymore. Oh, Jesus. Okay, that's that's not that's not funny. That is uh definitely not funny. Hold up. Uh, I can't fight in the water. Okay. Ooh, do I do I drink something here? Yeah, I think I need to consume a white raffer's decoction or something. As much as I hate using potions on these like measly drowners, um, I would much rather prefer not to have to start all over again. Okay. Okay, there we go. I didn't even take a hit after. <laughs> I went down to low health, but better safe than sorry. Okay, so these footprints are like human footprints, right? Yeah, very suspicious. Okay, what do we have here? Hornwort. Why did I just pick that up? I have no idea. Oh, there's One our woodland beast. One step more beast. and you'll gain a new hole in your head, Dwan. What do you seek here? Speak! Hmm, that's actually kind of loud. If that's coming through my speakers, I'm definitely going to have to think about another way of, uh, of listening to the audio. So, yeah, excuse me if that's actually coming through. Let me just turn down the volume slightly here. Just give me one second. Uh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I almost forgot how to turn off, turn down the uh, volume on my on my speakers. Okay, so we got some Squaytel here. Uh, let me talk to your commander. Need to talk to your commander. It's important. I don't trust you. 
Figured as much when I saw your bow aimed at me. Still have me in your sight. And I'm just not prone to doing stupid things. I can assure you of that. I'll be assured when you hand me your weapons. Come on, your swords. Drop them, and I'll take you to Venosio. Uh, well, fine. I think for the most part, Squaytail can be trusted if you're a witcher. I mean, as long as you're not a human. You know, if you're a human, they will string you up and pretty much just let you bleed out to die. They will do whatever it takes to kill you, but... Geralt is kind of riding on the blurry lines between human and non-human, so it's okay. Fine. Lead the way. That gun. Strange. No monsters trouble us. Might not trouble you. But the Redanians are convinced something prowls these woods. Hired me to kill it. Well, they're mistaken. It's not the first time. There's no monster here. Your work is done. This isn't a game. Men have died. Soldiers have died. Radovid soldiers, serving the man who torments the Enshe from the Great Sea to the Blue Mountains. Soldiers who joined in massacres, tortured our brothers, raped our sisters. I shan't cry for them. And will not stop attacking those transports. We must eat, same as you. So you've a choice. Leave now and forget what you've seen, or die. Hmm. It's very difficult to remain neutral in this situation. I mean, obviously she makes a really good point, right? The Redanians kill them, they kill the Redanians. It's just this kind of everlasting struggle between the Squaretel and, uh, and the humans. So the only way to be as close to neutral as possible is just to not, not do anything, because... Um, while it is true that Geralt more uh, like often chooses a lesser evil, um, contrary to what he says, you know, I think uh, one of the famous Geralt quotes is, "If I were to choose between uh, two evils in the in the world, I'd rather not choose at all." Um, a lot of the times, from what I see in this game, at least, <laughs> he does choose a lesser evil um, very often. So uh, that that happens, but in this case. What we have to do to kind of remain as lore friendly as possible is to just not do anything because either way people are going to die, right? Uh, either the Squire Tower are going to die or the Redanians are going to die. Well, we might as well just have let them kind of sort them themselves out and maybe uh, in the future things will be a bit better. Who knows? Do what you will. I'm not about to get involved. Give him his things, and toss in something for those transports. Wise decisions should be rewarded. Va fail. See? They are pretty reasonable. But now I am overweight. <laughs> Why am I- oh, they gave me some fabric. Oh boy. Did you just give me some fabric? Uh, hmm. What else did you give me? Oh, these things, I think. Wolf hides. Yeah, I don't- I don't need these. <laughs> Uh, drop. Let's drop them all. Yeah. Sorry. What is this? Incense. Okay. How much does this fabric weigh? Eight. So four each. Man. Okay. Definitely need to do some inventory management and check this out. I'm going to save the game here. I think taking this actually starts a fight with them. Uh, let's, let's not. <laughs> That is her sword, and she's definitely not going to be happy if I take it. Alright, so... At this point, I'm just gonna have to... Yeah, I'll have to go back to the guard captain who we took the quest from. And see what he says. Let's take a look. What is the shortest path there? Uh... Yeah, sure. I'll swim across this... This river. Okay, Geralt just casually swimming across the Pontar. <laughs> okay. Get on Roach as well. Roach. There you are. Let's go. Okay, I'm not going to bother with these enemies obviously. Probably just wolves I didn't see, but 
most likely nothing else really comes in such large packs. So once we return to this guard captain, he will give us a couple of choices. Those being, well, I will have to make a choice for myself. Uh, those being um, rat out the Squatel for being, you know, part uh, in some kind of forest camp. Or I can just say I couldn't find the... Uh, so if I do that, I think he gives me a reward. Um, he gives me something, I believe. But he doesn't give me the actual reward because he's like, you didn't bring me the, their heads, then like no reward for you, right? Um, but he gives me something, I think. I don't know what. But I'm not going to go with that path. I'm just going to say I couldn't find um, the culprits. And we'll just leave it at that. When I grow up, I want to be a lad. <laughs> Geralt is nothing if not an honest witcher. You're back, finally. Did you get the beast? Uh, nope. Didn't find anything. No. Searched the woods, didn't find a thing. Might have moved on. That, or you're one shite witcher. What are you still doing here? You're not getting any coin. Just a kick in the arse if you're lucky. Get lost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's Boy, that. No reward for poor Geralt, but we got something from the Squato. That's, uh, that's something, I suppose. Okay, let's uh, let's move on to the next area here. We got a place of interest here, and uh, we'll probably after that just head on down to the notice board here. Um, I'm actually not even sure what town this is. This should have been the very first village we visited after coming into Velen, but obviously, I was sidetracked by the uh, Hearts of Stone DLC, so I never got to visit that place. But we will. Rest assured, we will. Okay. Oh, this is the aftermath of a battlefield right here. Reminds me of that place from White Orchard. Where we did the uh, missing brother quest for Dune. Alright. What is this? Oh, hey. Neckers. Neckers, Neckers, Neckers. Yeah. Neckers, not difficult at all. What? Not even the Necker Warrior. Of course, that is uh, if they don't come in massive, massive packs, which they usually do. <laughs> Still, they're not overwhelmingly difficult, it's just I gotta be careful with my defense here. Oh god, yeah, stuff like that. Because they rarely give you an opportunity to actually attack. Um, you kind of have to back off and then attack when whatever they're not attacking because it's all about winning, winning that damage race, right? Who can who kill who first? If I don't make any, any mistakes, then I can kill them first, but... Oh, with me, you just never know. Okay. I wonder at what point I should just stop taking these, uh... Monster materials. What I've been doing, actually, when I'm, like sorting out my inventory off screen is if I have like a lot of a particular ingredient so let's say I have a lot of necker claws then I'll just sell off a good portion of them I won't sell off all of them but uh, maybe like 70% of them get some money at the same time lose some carry weight yeah because first of all crafting witcher gear is not cheap and second Oh god, I didn't mean to take everything there. Uh, god damn it, I'm still so used to divinity controls. <laughs> what is this? Oh, this is definitely not worth it. Um, what about this one? Yeah, sure, I'll take that one. Witcher sets are definitely not cheap. It costs like thousands to just upgrade one level. Thousands of my hard-earned crowns. Oh, check that out. Four pieces of the superior Ursine armor. Nice. Didn't even have to follow a quest for that one. Okay, so what do we have here? Uh, okay, more knackers. No biggie. Let's use a yard in here. Nice. Oh, come on. Hmm. I feel really sluggish while I'm inside a Yurden trap. Could it be that it actually also like reduces my movement? Or maybe it just like slows down time in general. I have no idea how Yurden works anymore. 
Or it could just be a purely psychological thing. It's like, I'm inside the yard and I feel slower, but I'm actually not. I don't know. Hmm. Let's uh, let's take a look. Let's check my attack speed here um, inside the Yurden. I don't know if this actually like tells me anything, but maybe it does. Where is the where's the attack speed thing? There it is, 119%. Okay. What about when I'm outside? So outside, okay. Or you can just dissipate. My attack speed 119. Yeah, I mean either it doesn't. Either the Yurden Trap doesn't affect my attack speed at all, or the attack speed number just doesn't change inside. Um, who knows? Okay, let's see. What else do we have in here? Why did I even come in here? What is this place? <laughs> uh, oh, okay, so this was a monster's den. Okay. Got some loot to be found. Gaz bog runestone. Okay, that's not bad. That's a burning runestone. And we got two more chests here. Sedarian Gambeson and various other goodies. Anything else? Uh, nope, that should be it. Let's see if this place is complete. It's not. Oh. Usually when you've looted all the things that you should be looting in a place, um, the, the marker on the map grays out. Let's see. Okay. Didn't loot this one properly. First grab. Oh god, I shouldn't have even picked that up. Let's see. Hmm, no, it still hasn't grayed out. What? Hmm. I mean, typically it should be graying out. I, I think there was like a small bug in where it doesn't, even after you loot everything in the cave. Um, yeah, that's weird. Because now I'll just never know it, uh, in the future. Uh, I won't know if I complete completed this place or not. Hmm. Okay, well that's fine. In the future, if I want to come back here, I will. <laughs> I would have forgotten all about this moment. Hi, bunny. Okay, moving on to the next place now. Ooh, damn. My uh, carry weight is going to be an issue soon. Okay, so we're going to move on to uh, the notice board. We're going to give the notices a little bit of a read, unlock a couple more places of interest, and we'll see where we go from there. I'm actually kind of um, looking forward to continuing with the story again. Uh, like, the interesting parts of the game are, are still yet to come. This whole Velen main quest is very long, and it's very involved, but we don't really gain any progress in finding Siri. We kind of, through the Bloody Bearing, we kind of see what Siri has been up to here in Velen, but uh, as far as just clues on where she went, we don't really find much. Warning, watch what you say, the trees have years, a kind stranger. Okay. Forefather's Eve approaches, I think we already read this one at some point or another. It's basically the Peller saying the Forefather's Eve is here, and uh, oh yes, he actually did approach us, didn't he? Saying that we need to conduct the ritual and whatever. And Geralt's like, we'll do it tonight. But who knows how many days it's been. <laughs> it's okay, it's not a missable side quest. We can do that anytime we want. Uh, Darlin, Ainshe, that's a bunch of uh, elven talk there that I don't understand. Let's see if I can understand something at least. Mm -hmm. Oh, huh. The last line there, Ested Esacrisa, um, is a line spoken by Eridan, the leader of the Wild Hunt. I only know that because I played uh, Gwent, the online multiplayer version, and that's one of the <laughs> one of the lines that Eridan says, but I don't know. Notice, consider, consider yourself informed. Every man with a producing milch or milk, <laughs> milch, uh, <laughs> milch cow is obliged to bring it to Crow's Perch for the week's end. After that, we will find a cow in any man's yard. Uh, if we... After that, we find a cow in any man's yard. We'll give him 50 lashes on the spot, the man, not the cow. And take all other goods of his we can carry. Anyone reporting a man hiding a cow will get a sack of grain as a reward, Sergeant Ardo. Hmm. Guide wanted. I want I need of a man to guide me uh, and me family across the Pontar. Five of us in all, me, my wife, three young'uns, but they's calm, not the crying or yelling sort. 
won't give us away to the soldiers. I'm not rich, but whatever I've got, I'll give. In fact, I'll take on debt and go in someone's service. Anything, as long as it gets us out of Velen. Please, someone hear my plea. Makes sense. Velen is a very, very terrible place to live right now. Right in the middle of the war between Nilfgaard and Redania. From the innkeep, you buy yourself drinks at the inn at the crossroads with Novograd crowns. We take no other coin. We don't do tabs either. No exchanges, save for eat or drink. If anyone else doesn't like that, uh, they can go rut for acorns. Okay. So, what is this little village? Honestly, all these villages look all the same to me, so I don't know their names. Mulberry Dale. Okay. Nice. Anything of note around here, or is 3 a.m. too early? <laughs> I'm gonna say 3 a.m. is too early. Yeah. Just barging into people's homes. Watching them sleep. Alright. Nothing here. And... This is a locked door. Oh! <laughs> this uh, really reminds me of that time when we did um, that quest involving that halfling who was butchered for meat. Uh, in the forest by that old couple. They had the exact same house with a door that I couldn't go into. <laughs> I don't know why they just that remind like it's such a long time ago and it uh, It didn't make much of an impression on me, but They're I just remembered it for whatever attacked. reason. One from either side. Cavalry swooped in from the wood. A wall of infantry marched from the swamp. Our boys wished to surrender, but the black ones would take no prisoners. They gathered our men. Stood him in a circle and cut down every last one like the butchers they were. Poppies cover the meadow now, or perhaps they're king cups drunk on blood from the soil. Hmm, damn, that's so sad. There are a lot of them beasties you've, uh, you know. Ah, <sighs> the reality of re realities of war, man, I'm telling you. It's not very different from what they are in this game. The Witcher 3 captured it pretty nicely. Not that I know what war is like, but I've seen documentaries, you know. Vicarious uh, knowledge. <laughs> okay, so this is an abandoned house, so I'm free to blast down that door. We got a diagram, black pro dust and some boats. Okay. Anything else? Nope. All right. So I guess there's nothing else to really do here in Mulberry Dale. Um, what are you staring at? <laughs> check that out. 3.38 a.m. and the sun is rising. Hmm. Excellent. Because I very much enjoy the daytime more than the nighttime. Alright, so uh, our notice board unlocked a couple more places of interest for us to do. Let's go on now and uh, do them. Some dogs here, let's take care of them. Oh, dude, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> yeah, more than I bargained for. Let's forget about it. We'll let the guards handle those. Roach! Roach! Oh, damn it, I hate it when it says the horse is out of range. What is that? Now? No? What about now? Hmm. I guess I guess not. Roach is being stubborn. Oh my god, look at that. Look at all those neckers. Oh jeez. Nope. That's uh <laughs> That's more neckers than I really care to fight right now. Actually, I don't mind fighting them. It's just I don't really get anything out of it, right? It's <laughs> What is the point? And we got like huge packs of wolves here. If you give me a choice between fighting like 10 Neckers or let's say one Forktail, I'll fight the Forktail. There's just something about fighting one enemy and keeping all of my attention on it that just makes fights easier, right? Like if you're fighting 10 Neckers, you have to kind of look at all of them at once and there's no way my feeble brain can handle like the movements of all of them and try to parry and guard their attacks. <laughs> no, I can't do it. Okay, what do we have here? All right, cool. Cool, what? I can do. Lost your nerve, especially if it's a single one. Oh, Algu. Oh, ouch. Algu, I can also do. Hey, stop healing. Ouch. 
Ah, damn it, took a hit. Okay. There's some more over there, but luckily I got this guy by himself. And uh, in fact, let's go ahead and apply an oil or something on my weapon. Haven't done that in a while. And uh, while we're here, we're also going to uh, put some points onto our character skills. Haven't done that in a while either. Alright, so we got a strong attack point here, which I'm going to keep on putting into crushing blows. That's what I was working on last time. Strong attack, armor piercing, and critical hit damage. That's good. Defense, let's go ahead and max out this deadly precision. Now we got reduced stamina cost of defensive action by 15%. The damage inflicted by unparryable attacks while countering is reduced by 75%. And the damage inflicted by huge monster attacks while countering is also reduced by 50%. Nice. Okay, so that gives, gives us a bit more... Uh, leeway as to what we can parry and what we can't when fighting certain monsters. Um, or rather just how much damage we take. <laughs> it's not really about what you can or can't parry. That That's uh, that's determined by your poise, which that doesn't affect. Um, so with Igni, the last time I put a point into Fire Stream, really? Huh. Whoa. This doesn't seem like... This doesn't seem like a terrific ability. Maybe I gotta actually use it. Hmm. I put a point into it though. Wow. What is this one? Hmm. You know what? Even though Fire Stream is kind of good, it does it does a lot of damage. Um, I just never remember to use it, so I think I'm going to stop uh, actually trying to invest into this one and just go into Pyromaniac. Have Igni do a bit more damage uh, because I think I. I checked out Melt Armor at one point, and it's just not really that terrific, so... Oh man, this is... <sighs> to be honest, this Pyromaniac is not that terrific either. You know what? Screw it. Melt Armor it is. 2% <laughs> extra damage is 2%. Okay, so we got a bomb creation point here, which I'm going to use to max out cluster bombs. Haven't been using a lot of bombs, honestly. Um, mainly I just throw like a northern wind or something, but uh, maybe once, uh, once uh, I don't know, I get frustrated enough about big, big packs of enemies, I'll use more bombs, I don't know. <laughs> and we got a point on Trial of the Grasses, which we can put on a new one here because we have maxed out fast metabolism. Um... Toxicity percentage. Hmm, okay. Based on toxicity percentage. Uh, sounds, sounds decent, actually. Okay, so Frenzy gives us a maximum of 15% more speed. Endure Pain gives us... Uh, ooh, more poise. And uh, Killing Spree gives us Stamina and Vigor Regeneration. Let's go with Killing Spree. And that's it. And I was going to apply an oil here. Let's see. Brown oil will do on the Iris. And let's go ahead and kill us some Al Ghouls. I'm assuming those two other enemies I saw there are also Al Ghouls. Oh no! <laughs> the Neckers? What? Oh god. What the heck? Okay. I don't know what a single elbow was, was, it was doing with a bunch of Neckers, but sure. Hey guys. Sorry to spoil your fun. Okay. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is really strange. There's no battle music or anything. Just slaying Neckers like oh, nobody's on. business. Oh my god. And last one. Dead. Oh, that's a combo. Alright. Salute the Neckers. I really do want to use potions more in combat so I can, like, advance my Trial of the Grasses. Um skill tree and I want to find some like decoction recipes already but <laughs> can't seem to find any 
to actually upgrade that uh, the other skill tree that uh, I think is called mutation. But you know these minor enemies, they just don't warrant using any potions. So if I were to be using potions, I would just be wasting them, and that feels even worse. <laughs> All right, so we got okay, sure, just various gems and ores and stuff. Okay, let's move on here. There's one more place of interest here. Oh, wait a minute. I saw something. Um, ah, oh, never mind. It was just my imagination. Okay, so let's just do one more. And we'll probably end things off. Kind of eager to continue the main story already. Yeah. In hindsight, I... I think I should have done it this episode, but <laughs> just wanted to get back into it, you know. Oh, hi, that's a foglet. Okay, you know what? I was what? No, I didn't want to do that. Oh my god! I was I was just about to say like I was going to craft some a couple more potions, or not craft, just use some potions, um, because foglets can be tricky sometimes. But I didn't want to use a swallow. I wanted to use something else. Whatever. Oh Jesus! Maybe I won't end up regretting it. Maybe. Oh my god. He's actually dying pretty quickly. <laughs> oh god. Come on. There we go. Alright, well that died pretty fast. I did take a couple of hits though, so I, I suppose the swallow is not completely wasted. Ah, it still hurts me a little bit though. I totally didn't need to use a swallow there. Okay, what do we have? Locked key required, which probably on this guy here. Oh, a letter. Letter, uh, Juaner. Of course he can stay with us. What kind of question is that? Come, bring the whole family. War hasn't struck here yet. We've got plenty of food. My belly's even grown a bit in recent weeks. So if you take a bit of beer and bacon out of my mouth, you'll actually be doing me a favor. We've already prepared a bed for you. You'll stay in the attic. It's comfortable there, as long as you don't forget to duck when you go up the stairs. Happy trails, Juaner. See you soon. Matsk. Oh, interesting names. Tough luck. Yeah, really tough luck, huh? He was just saying the war hasn't reached here, and uh, it looks like they were attacked by the Foglet. Definitely not killed in the war, but killed by a big monster instead. Not exactly more pleasant. Alright, precision bolt linen, dry fruit, glyph, and various other stuff. Which put me overweight. Terrific. <laughs> I bet it's that linen. I bet you anything it's that linen. Well, I mean, I was already 144 out of 145, but still, let's see. Sort by weight. Oh, jeez, these iron ingots. Yeah, I'm gonna toss these. Just one of them. Yep, and this gives me just enough carry capacity to call Roach and probably sort out my inventory. But before that, we picked up a book this episode, and I just want to go ahead and read that. See what this one's all about. Stoneworker's Notes. Uh, I should probably, should have probably read this one. Uh, when I picked it up back at the quarry, but it's fine. Uh, 13, 7, 13 of July, I'm guessing, but I think uh, the months have a different name in this in this game. 1271, uh, Vimy Vivaldi's order. Order, 20 blocks measuring 40 by 70 by 30, 3, 55 by 60 by 40, note uniform stone, no inclusions to be used for bank counters. Order for the Vagal Buds residence, 5 slabs measuring 120 by 80 by 5, note polished surface for decorative purposes. Order fulfilled. Collection arranged for the 18th of August, 1271. A payment should be delivered in species. Species? Species? Do they mean pieces? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what kind of species of, um, like, query stone can you have? To purchase. To purchase. Tracer times 3. Wooden hammer times 5. Leveler times 2. Chisel times 4. 18th of August, 1271. Novgaard has crossed the border. George... George or your gay your whatever <laughs> do not come to retrieve his order I have nothing which with which to pay the boys for their work they say they're gathering their tools and going to Novograd 20th 
of August. The, the road to Novograd is closed, blockades along the Pontar. Redanians on one side, Novgardians on the other. The horizon burns at night. Pillars of smoke can be seen during the day. We'll barricade ourselves inside. Others want to join us, but we haven't enough food, so we must send them away. 21st of August, the Redanians are ordering us to open the gates. They want to stay station a garrison in the quarry. No mention of what will become of us, and war rages all around. They say a major battle was brewing. We'll be, uh, we're staying put. The Redanian division small, no siege equipment, and our palisades strong. Perhaps they will give up and leave. Yeah, I think they did. Yeah, that curry for the most part was like, was uh, was left alone. The I think they are either Temerian or Redanian workers. They're still there, so everything worked out for them, I suppose. Yep. Okay. So what I'm gonna do off screen is I'm in desperate need to manage my inventory a little bit, sell off some stuff, probably sell off some stuff on Roach too. Uh, check out those saddle bags. Very fancy, Roach. Very, very fancy. And that's our Ophiri saddle that we won from uh, that uh, Ophiri merchant back a while ago. So yeah, that's the end of this time. Next time we come back, we're going to continue with the main story. We're going to keep on doing this quest right here, Family Matters. We're going to go back to the Baron, see what we can do, and we'll just move on from there. This has been, I believe this is episode 40, 44? Yeah, I think I, I think I've said it was 44 last time, but I think it's actually 44 this time. I'm really not even keeping track anymore. I'm just playing the game and doing things as I go. It's uh, it's a really relaxing process for me, to be honest. Anyways, guys, I've rambled on long enough. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.